In this video, I'll discuss activity model considerations when analyzing a conversion process. As always, we can start with a basic or simple, you might hear it called sometimes as well, BPMN activity model. We know that we need to authorize production of new goods when we run low on inventory. From there, raw materials must be issued into the production process where the work is performed. When the work is completed, we now have new finished goods that we can then turn around and sell. All right, so here's a basic activity model. From our basic process, we can determine responsibilities for each activity and add the appropriate lanes. We can also consider the nature of the conversion process and whether it consists of batches of products. If it does, well, we can uh, turn those batches into loops as we work our way through the production order. We can also analyze exceptions to the standard process, such as errors. For an automotive manufacturer, we would need to break the performed production work down into the many activities, events, and exceptions that would take place on the manufacturing floor. And this is true for whatever type of manufacturer you have. This will be broken down into a lot more detail most of the time. We would also add appropriate data stores and data objects as needed. This iterative process of developing your activity diagram should continue until the entire process is documented at a level of detail appropriate for thorough analysis. If we think back to our introduction to BPMN activity modeling, you might recall that one option for activities is to present a collapsed subprocess. If you think about the batches within the conversion process, we basically have a looping collapsed subprocess that's part of our conversion process. If we expand the collapsed subprocess, we can see that it hides the activities, gateways, and sequence flow loops from our earlier diagram. Now, how do you determine when to map out the entire process versus using a collapsed subprocess? The example in sales and collections where a purchase had to be made is a good example. Purchasing wouldn't typically be considered a key part of the sales cycle, so collapsing that in the sales cycle makes sense. We have another full expenditure cycle process diagram to guide us through that purchasing sub-process. In this case, we don't have the batch loops fully represented outside the conversion process diagrams. When we collapse the loops, we end up with a simple and possibly overly simple diagram. Now this still may be useful for high level conceptual discussions, but probably not for an analysis of the business process itself. For now, it's probably best to present the full process explicitly in the diagram rather than collapsing it into sub processes. We're still at a simple enough level even with this full expansion that is fairly easy to understand. At this point, we can start examining the activities and roles in more detail. If we take a look, we see that it's probably not the best idea to have the manufacturing department inspect their own work. Instead, it might be better to have a separate inspection or QA department. This is a good opportunity to discuss the processes with your client or with your managers and both highlight potential weaknesses and recommended improvements to the process. As mentioned earlier, we would continue to expand this diagram with additional activities, events, and data stores as we analyze the business process further. That's it for our discussion of BPMN activity diagrams in the conversion process. I hope you found it useful.